So SCARE ME is an acronym. It was developed by the Chicago Recovery Alliance. Uh, the S in SCARE ME stands for stimulate. So you found your friend, they're unconscious. You know, you yeah. give them that little shake, said their name, they're not responding. So what you want to do is see if they will respond to stimulus. The way we teach people to do that is with a sternal rub. So you take your knuckles, rub really hard on somebody's sternum. What that's going to do is create, a, create some pain. It's going to create a great deal of pain without really causing any injury. So if you're doing that to somebody and you're not getting a response, you know there's a problem. The C in scare me stands for call 911. You stimulate, you don't get a response, you want to get help on the way as fast as possible. Yeah, I'm with my, my friend, he's, he's not breathing, so he's unresponsive, I can't wake him up. All of our first responders uh, currently um, are, are trained and equipped uh, with the Narcan. So the A in scare me stands for airway. When someone dies from an opiate overdose, they're dying from respiratory arrest. The first thing we want to do is want to open somebody's mouth and make sure there's nothing obstructing their airway. If there is, you want to get it out of there. So the R in scare me stands for rescue breathing, and this is singularly the most important part of every training I do. The brain is not allowing them to be receptive to taking enough oxygen. Their muscles are so relaxed, they're not taking in enough oxygen. And if they just are doing rescue breathing, there's, and calling 911, there's an opportunity to save a life. Rescue breathing is very simple. You lay the person on their back, you tilt their head back, open their mouth, pinch the nose shut, make a good seal between your mouth and their mouth. You give two breaths, you count to five, give one breath every five seconds thereafter. One, two, three, four, five. So the E in scare me stands for evaluate. After you've done six to eight initial breaths, got a little oxygen in their system, it's gonna have done one of two things. In a best case scenario, maybe that's kind of jump-started their lungs. Maybe they're starting to breathe on their own better, becoming a little responsive. If that's the case, you just wanna monitor the situation closely. A more likely scenario, what you've done with those six to eight breaths is that you've put some oxygen in their lungs and that's given you the chance to uh, prepare the Narcan injection. After you evaluate in the, the situation and if it still lo looks as if it's an overdose, then we do the muscular injection and then evaluate again and hopefully at that point the paramedics are there. So, And then we, you do it again if you need to. The M in scare me stands for muscular injection. The Narcan comes in single vials. You just pop the orange cap off, you use an intermuscular syringe that we provide, withdraw the Narcan, and inject into a major muscle, into the thigh, to the butt, or into the shoulder. Uh, the muscular injection is gonna take three to five minutes to kick in. In that time, you wanna continue breathing for the person, making sure they're getting oxygen. If you've been given an intranasal kit, you're obviously not going to give a muscular injection. In this case, the M in Scare Me stands for mucosal atomization. Unwrap the atomizer and clean the nose area. Place the atomizer in either nostril and depress the plunger. After five minutes has gone by, the final E stands for evaluate and support. So you evaluate the situation. Was the first shot effective? The majority of the time, one shot is enough to wake somebody up. If they are not responding to the first shot, by all means, give them the second shot. You know, you can't give somebody too much of this stuff. So when you might su suspect that fentanyl is involved in an overdose, which easy signs to, to look for with that is when somebody um, goes unconscious and looks like they're in an overdose really quickly. And so in those cases, yeah, you want to give someone uh, two vials of the naloxone to start um, just to work it out of their system a little quicker. When they do wake up, you want to be supportive of the person. There's a chance that they could be in some kind of withdrawal. Don't let them use more. If they were to use more, first of all, they wouldn't feel it. Naloxone is going to be blocking those receptor sites. Furthermore, naloxone is a short-lasting medication. It's going to wear off in 30 to 90 minutes. If somebody um, takes heroin, and that's going to last where, they, say, the half-life is, depending on what you read, say two to four hours. Uh, and then they get, so they have an overdose and they're not breathing. If they get naloxone, naloxone lasts about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And so that's the mismatch. A lot of prescription pills are really similar, but things like methadone can be even upwards of 24 to 48 hours. So the opiates tend to stay in the body longer. So it's really important with this medication that that person, once they get the once they get the naloxone, that they still seek emergency medical care. 
there is the potential for somebody to slip back into an overdose after the naloxone wears off. Um, more than that, the potential is with, you know, when people use again um, after the naloxone's been administered because maybe they are feeling a little bit withdrawal sick. Um, it's really important to encourage people not to do that because that's when the, the really big risk of someone slipping back into an overdose would occur. So, If they don't know what it is and they're unresponsive, being able to use naloxone can make a difference because it's not going to harm them by giving them naloxone if it's not an opioid. If they give them naloxone and they respond to it, then it was there. It was some, they had an opioid in their system. If not, it's also why we need to make sure that 911 is being called because they need to be able to make sure that they are getting the medical attention they need. Let's review Scare Me once more. S is for stimulate. Use a sternum rub to determine if the person is responsive or not. C is for call for help. Call 911 immediately for help. A is for airway. Checking for airway blockages. R is for rescue breathing, to provide oxygen while you are preparing the naloxone kit. E is for evaluate. Evaluate the situation to determine if they are coming to. M is for muscular injection, or mucosal atomization if you have an intranasal kit, to administer the naloxone. E is for evaluate again. If the person hasn't come to, repeat scare me, starting with another muscle injection or mucosal atomization. 